Hello and welcome, and it is that of Crypto Day. Every day is such. It's Friday, the 18th of May, 2018. I'd like to welcome you to the Money Charts channel. And I first want to start off by talking about portfolio, or at least mine in particular, as I've been in the game now for close to 15 months. Anyone who's been in this for 9, 10, 12 months or longer should be doing very, very well. And I'm confident that if you play this in the long term time frame, the gains can be just gigantic. And they've been very good for me, of course, to start. So how do I stand right now? Well, I started with several hundreds of dollars, which to me is what would be the equivalency of a good night on the town. Maybe a couple leaf tickets, a good dinner and stuff like that. That's uh, that's going to cost you a bit. And I like to use an example like that because if one's able to spend currency like that and you're trying to get in the crypto game, if you don't want to see heart-wrenching losses to your portfolio, if you start off with such like that, it can turn into great profits via amazing Bitcoin gains, but more importantly, outperforming the market via trading. I currently have a quarter of my position, which is much greater than what I started with on the exchange but for the trading strategy i talked about in the four minute morning where i'm playing over 60 codes playing against each other selling and buying based on their perf performance it has barely done well since i've done it over the last little while but the markets have been high, barely volatile and i showed examples back in april that uh, there's going to be cool or, or periods where you just will either lose decent or you will have it hardly move. I'm at the hardly move phase. 6% of my portfolio is that trading XBY, trying to get as much profits as I can with that, swing trading it whenever I can. I have uh, a 790 sale and a 690 sale that I, and yes, yeah, 790 and a 690 sale that I'm uh, looking to buy back. Currently the price is about 670. I'm shorting Bitcoin with 5% of my portfolio. And if I could put more, of my funds on the hardware wallet and such, I'd probably go 20 to 25, looking for stuff, either fiat currency, a some sort of crypto, gold and silver, or even uh, stocks in a crypto method, I guess, as well. But I can only put stuff like Bitcoin and Litecoin. So about two thirds of my portfolio is in HODL and I have hard because it's a hardware wallet. And uh, yes, yeah, so then I want to go over that to start the video. As if you are a trader, managing your portfolio should be job number one. And I started, thankfully I got a few gifts from people when the channel, uh, within this channel uh, back in February. Thank you very much. And I was also purchasing them at a gas station back in here. Yeah, at a gas station. And just like 40 bucks here, 20 bucks here, 50 bucks here and there. Thus starting with a good three figure amount and since that has happened I really haven't had any reason to buy Bitcoin after all it's just kind of easier to work and uh, or just trade the market and get Bitcoins for free via trading rather than buying them so even though oh there's a decline here well if I had extra fiat currency at the time I probably should have bought some here in hindsight given that my portfolio was pretty good then, but it could have been a lot better. And then of course you have monstrous gains. And when you have big volatility, I can talk about putting a third into stocks, third into, and when I say third into stocks, third into any fiat currency situation as far as investing level, a third into precious metals and a third into cryptos. But if you do such, and you, were, you could easily go to the point of having, originally have 33% of your portfolio and everything, then it could very easily work out one of two ways. You'll see, oh, now in a spot where if you put a third of it up here, you might see that uh, you had, uh, say, if you put 100,000 in each uh, level, well, this 100,000 would be now worth like, say, uh, 40,000. Then you have like 90,000 maybe in precious metals and say 100 in the other. You're like, your cryptocurrency portfolio is really... It's, it's going to be volatile, but at the same point, you could get into cryptocurrency, say, back in uh, here where it was like 4,000. You put 100,000 in then, 
then it goes up to 20,000. Now you got a half a million in cryptocurrencies and you got about 100,000 in stocks. So it's gonna move wildly in that way. So that's why I like to use the example starting with the amount of one good night out on the town. Because for so many people, if you're able to do things like go to a Leaf game, buy some nice steaks or whatever whatever it is that you can have fun with spending currency that type of amount can actually have amazing gains within trading because if you turn well say for example now if you buy if you have say eight hundred dollars worth you're only going to get 0.1 bitcoin but if you work it smart enough maybe you can trade that number up to over one and and it can be much higher than that and next thing you know, you can find out this thing goes to 50,000. So now 800 bucks goes to 50 grand. And it might take you a year for that to happen. And it might take you two or three months and it might take you five years. But obviously in order to trade against the market and be successful, you need to be good. There's no bones about it for anything otherwise. I've obviously went through different strategies to explain so many different levels and I know so many people have been able to uh, be able to pick up on great information. So a very, very long intro talking about portfolio management. Let's now look at this market. And I've accidentally just playing around earlier, removed the drawing tool. So the 7900 Fibonacci level that should be here is where the price action is at. But as this market plays, we have support resistance amongst this level here, and it's been declining. So we have a pause day from yesterday's decline today. You know, for me, I'm just gonna let it do what it's going to do. There really is nothing else at this stage. I have positions ready in because the way I look at it, is if this thing only goes down a bit, then it would be a, fail, a chance for a failed breakout, but it's also a chance that's gonna further to go to down some more. But it's almost like in baseball. If the pitcher throws a ball, but it hits the dirt and it goes to the backstop to start the inning off, well, that's basically ball one. And then the pitcher throws again, and it's high and outside, counts 2-0. and oh. There's a chance that that person might get on first base, but that chance is higher. There's a chance that team might score in that inning, and it's higher than it was when the inning started. That's exactly how I look at it. If you're unknown, all you can do is look at the situations for how probable something is. In a baseball game, you can look at, okay, this pitcher is starting. He's facing these batters to start the inning. He has pitched one ball in the dirt. He threw one ball high and outside. He's got whatever. I got this information based on what he did in the day. You can get statistical information to see how probable an event is. And those that are of got more skill, put more work into it, will do better at finding percentage odds. And that's basically the whole way that I look at it. But in baseball, I look, if it's in a situation where, say he does walk the guy in four pitches, the next person hits a, uh, a ball in the left field for a single, it's first and second. If there's any way I can play on the situation that the team's coming up with a great rally to start the inning and profit from it, then I would, but they, I can't. But if instead on the 2-0 count, he battles back and the count goes to 3-2, and two, then he strikes him out and it's 3 up and 3 down, that's a totally different situation. And coming into the event, you, so many different things can happen. So if it comes down the market to here, what type of events are you going to do? Now, I'm not trading Bitcoin directly against the dollar, so pretty much nothing. Other than the fact that my short position, uh, none of it's going to get out at that price because I'm looking to get out at 6000 and 3000 Nothing higher, nothing lower. 
So I would do nothing. But with altcoins, that would be a much different situation. I mean, one example is the great volatility ZEC offers. I have had so many trades the last five days. And if you look at my chart, if you look at this chart, it should be relatively obvious that uh, you sell when it goes higher, which means, for me anyway, this move happens, sell. This happens, buy back. This happens, sell. It's not down enough to buy back yet. Here we have steam moving on the single hour time frame. So it's becoming sell territory for me. I've sold a little bit earlier today. 400 minute time frame. This is an interesting pattern. That's why I'm bringing this chart up. What can we see here that can give us an edge and try to determine the direction in which this is going to go. Support while it's declining the 18 average, resisting the low, the, that of the lows. It had one opportunity trying to get to that high. Near, near, it fell, fails. Failed move, fast move lower. Buy time. This is where you buy, at least in my strategy. Market comes back to where it comes from. As far as trading is again, in this range, you look at the white or the ticks that go up and down. Multiple intraday volatility, making it very good to trade on shorter term time frames or to get many buy and sells back and forth along the way. But as far as market sentiment is concerned, after it had resisted its level of support, it did go below the 18 average of lows, and that's fine. But it never did anything more because the worst it did, did on the way down was establish a level of support at the three, this, this line, which is ultimately or easily viewable as that of a higher low. The 18 average never declined, but it remained sideways for quite some time. Yesterday's session, it got above this. And now we see today it's holding within that level. So it looks very, very probable to me that there's a good chance that this is going to break out. Now there's ultimate, there's multiple ways of trading or analyzing this further. I see a situation where it's doing this. It's very productive to find support where it came from. So any moves that come in here, maybe they're good buy levels, definitely areas you might want to look at. If you buy there, you get a little bit of a cheaper price. You're talking about the buying at 353 versus 366, which is where you would buy if you wanted to enter in a position like this right now. If you're looking for momentum, then you need it to break above a line like that, which means you're not buying this until it gets closer to at least around 385 to 380 to 390. A clear break. And then if you're waiting for a clear break above here, to me, I'm not going to go over which strategy is better because I don't trade it in any level like that. It can be very profitable to do so, but I'm very confident with the st trading strategy that I'm talking about, that I'm playing, that I can do very, very well within such. And I still trade a little like XBY and a few other ones, uh, but not really much more, no. So anyway, yes, this looks very, very, very good for making the potential to break out above this resistance on the 400 minute and test somewhere up towards here. At least you'd expect one leg to where it came from. And where it came from was around 41, even up to 42 handle. And then you talk about testing up to the previous high because we do have a case of this low, this high, and a price correction because I've talked about before when you have a move like this, I used to call it gap fill, but you got you got this empty space and this was correcting that empty space via that of price. So 
So let's look at this further on, say, a daily term time frame. Actually, the three day is going to be better. What's the pattern say here? It had a huge, huge price point in the year 2016, and it crashed long, hard, and it, it just kept going. This is just brutal, but that part is over. Markets are trading differently. So we have this low. A few up and down moves along the way, but it ultimately made it to this high because you can sell, there was opportunities to sell this peak, buy it back, sell this peak, buy it back, all that type of stuff. And even on the downtrend, buy down in here, sell in here. But it works out that from point low to point high, the vast majority of your orders should be sells. And you should have a lot less coins at the higher price than you do at the lower price. Which means to this low, maybe you've got 40 buy orders you hit and you hit 7 sell orders. That's the type of action that I'm looking at because there's not many opportunities to get gains. Okay, you sell in here, but if you got it, that's pretty much mostly all you got. So then we go up to this high, which is a lower one. And then we go down to this low, which is a higher one. Since then, lower high. Higher or low? This explains the market big time. Again, another reason why I decided to bring this chart up. It's a symmetrical triangle. I can draw lines like this and this. It's a form, it, it, it's a measure of indecision. Why is this not drawing? I'm trying to draw a trend line, just freehand. Yeah, so there's a symmetrical triangle. This is a form of indecision. Market's got to break from one level to the next. I've already talked about Bitcoin having a I got to make a decision soon. Are we going to have a big price correction from the major lows of under 200 and the big highs of 20,000? Or is it not time yet for that? And is, does that rally extend further? And well, that's the decision it's making. But a lot of the message of the entire state of the cryptos is in just this. It's at that time where it's got to make its decisionary moves. A lot of up and down choppy action can occur within these markets. So you can, I would, with the entire community of, car, of markets, all the codes, if you've heard like the, the crocodile teeth, don't be surprised if, but that we get some major up and down movements until that decision either side up or down is going to be made because if Bitcoin goes to like say to the upside and it makes its decision to go north 14,000 20 30 60 I'm expecting this most likely to break to the upside if Bitcoin makes its decision larger correctionary move breaking below five four thousand and at least to th round three probably then I'm going to be expecting this to probably make its decision south as well all right what do we have for time under 20 minutes still so i got more content that i want to show that i will i'm going to try to make this under 30 minutes in duration let's go next to black coin just again just doing the exact same thing talking about okay indecision lower volatility uh, because of the intro i talked about the trading strategy a quarter of my portfolio that has been making me like 7% to start the uh, over the last uh, five or six weeks. Well, m market maneuvers like that is a big reason why, why you're not making or losing really much at all. Because look at the movements beforehand. It's even lost the beautiful spike hires and lowers every day that it had from, oh, this is a three-day chart, but during this time frame, it's like barely doing anything at all. Look at the moves that preceded it. Those are going to come back again, volatile one direction or another. I don't see how it cannot. I mean, it doesn't have to be quite as volatile, but a lot more than it is as is. Because as this moves on, 
the big volatility that we have in like 2015 should get lower each year as this goes further but we got a long ways to go before lower volatility stable volatility is in such um for the crypto space and while i'm saying that i want to talk about stable volume because one of the things i look at for coins i want coins generally speaking for the most part that can consistently trade double digits bitcoin volume every single day now xby can do four or five bitcoins here and there i understand that but i've seen coins consistently trade at like two bitcoins three bitcoins one four five six and then now a big thing happens it's 80 bitcoin 120 bitcoin daily volume it's just insane so that's why when i was deciding the 60 plus coins that i wanted not many of them that have even even i was mainly looking for 20 to 30 minimum minimum bitcoin volume per day with the exception of some codes that I just couldn't pass up on, like the cannabis coin and so on. Now within a Digibyte, it has broken the neckline, I guess on the uh, double top, you can call it a head and shoulders. Either way, you got all this empty space in here from rally low to rally high. Is it going to need to fill in a very good price correction the last break, the last key low in here, I can see around 245 Satoshi. We're at 431. This thing could fall down to like, say, down in here and make a bullish higher low. But like a baseball game, a hockey game, a football game. I don't know who's going to win, but I could do my research to see who's got a better chance of doing so. And I think within stuff like this, there's a, to me, a better chance that this thing makes a, a leg lower than it does in breaking out now with that being said a leg lower would be at least to around 365 that would be a loss of 35 plus 31 that of 66 or a uh, volatility move of about 15 percent for this thing to get going you're talking about going 524 a move of about uh well over 20 percent again so it's not like uh going down is an underdog at this stage by any means uh, just looking at it blindly now here we talk about filling some of this uh gap space point low against bitcoin single 098 we'll say the 918 handle 918 up to 1842 it doubled it's still up over 50 percent from the low my guess is that it's at a stage now where it should find a bottom spot but how well it would do from that i don't know if we don't get much support here where we because we're supposed to i wouldn't be surprised if it moves fast down to the probably a break of the 12 handle below and don't be surprised if it's one big red candle because if you don't get support where you're supposed to, and we're pretty much supposed to around this level, then it can oftentimes be high volatile continuation. Now, when you have a move down to this level, this becomes a situation where you've now completed two thirds of what could be a head and shoulders pattern. With the left shoulder being the, uh, obviously this little gap to this point here, the head, because it's at the neckline for where it would be back to previous key level. You're looking at this band area being resistance, which would be like really in the 160s. But that would be also where you would top a head and shoulders pattern if it rallies from this point. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I'm looking most likely that this thing will probably go down to 120, either directly soon or after a rally that will then resist this 18. And there's really not much more I want to go over. So I'm just going to finish it off within Zen. So we'll, it will not be a 30 minute video, but it'll be over 25. This code defines perfection for 
all of the buy low, sell high strategies that I've talked about. Wild moves down, wild moves up. It's just phenomenal the opportunities that people can have and still have to be able to buy down here, sell here, buy here, sell and somewhere up here, buy somewhere down here. I don't know if you're going to sell this, but you should be selling up here, buying. Maybe you sell here, but maybe you don't. Buy all this up, sell this up. But remember the selling that you did here? Yeah, you can start buying that back now. That sell order you made in here, well, if the price comes down in here, if you're selling 340, buying back at 250, that's profitable. Thank you for tuning in to today's video. Of course, like always, everything you do within your own risk, own reward. But there's always people that are gonna say within stuff like cryptos, Man, it's so risky. You know what? It is. It's also rewardy as well. Thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.